Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, Nicole and I want to talk about the popular trend of, I would almost call it self-worship that we see cropping up in our current society. Well, it's definitely the case that this obsession with self-love and self-gratification has existed in a very significant way before. What makes it stand out in particular at the moment is that our culture wholly encourages and celebrates it as some sort of virtue. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that selflessness is viewed as a weakness in modern society, while self-interest is viewed as a strength. For example, people who have a lot of children who dedicate their lives to raising strong families are viewed with skepticism at best, while single, self-invested, career-oriented people are viewed with praise. We should certainly care about ourselves. We, we should strive for positive goals in life, of course, and we should care for ourselves mentally and physically to the best of our ability. However, this love of self can become tainted, I think even harmful if it reaches a point where we care for little beyond our own welfare, where we believe the entire world should revolve around us and our needs. In this video, we want to explore the trend of self-love or self-worship, whatever you want to call it. In particular, all of the ways in which it's encouraged and rewarded. But before we get into it, I want to just take a quick moment to say that I am extremely happy to once again be partnering with the incredible app and website Ground News. The media landscape is fundamentally broken. We can all see that it's devolved into a game of clickbait headlines wherein media outlets value their financial bottom lines as well as their own personal political agendas over reporting the facts. Many of us are tired of the misrepresentation and sensationalism. We simply want an apolitical platform that has one goal and one goal only, to keep us informed no matter our politics. And that's exactly why Ground News is so revolutionary. Ground News has an immense library of sources featuring over 50,000 outlets from across the world and political spectrum. You can see every side of every side so you can come to your own conclusions about the news. Furthermore, their blind spot features enables you to check your news blind spot and see stories that aren't being reported by one side of the political spectrum that you would otherwise miss in your bubble. If you find that you've become as tired as I have of media outlets pumping their biased articles into your social media feed, under the guise of objectivity, do yourself a favor and join me in downloading Ground News today. You can download the app completely for free using my personal link in the video description. This trend of self-worship and narcissism, it's obviously popular with millennials. Time published an article back in 2013 which compared and contrasted millennials with the previous generation, saying the incidence of narcissistic personality disorder is nearly three times as high for people in their 20s as for the generation that's now 65 or older, according to the National Institutes of Health. 58% more college students scored higher on a narcissism scale in 2009 than in 1982. Millennials got so many participation trophies growing up that a recent study showed that 40% believed they should be promoted every two years, regardless of performance. They are fame obsessed. Three times as many middle school girls want to grow up to be a personal assistant to a famous person as want to be a senator, according to a 2007 survey. Survey. Four times as many would pick the assistant job over CEO of a major corporation. They're so convinced of their own greatness that the National Study of Youth and Religion found the guiding morality of 60% of millennials in any situation is that they'll just be able to feel what's right. I do think it's unfair to solely point the finger at us millennials for being narcissistic. It's not only millennials who are obsessed with curating specific images of themselves and their lives on social media, who spend hours obsessing over the number of likes they get on a photo, who spend thousands of dollars a year on clothes, makeup, plastic surgery, who expect society to accept them exactly as they are, even if they have severe flaws, who place their personal happiness above all else, and so on. This narcissistic trend, it definitely exists in Generation Z as well. And one of the areas in particular where we see this self-worship and narcissism exploding for both millennials and Gen Z is in the area of identity politics. There's a constant battle over which group of people is most oppressed. You might ask yourself, 
why any person or any group of people would want to appear as if they're the most oppressed. Because when our society recognizes a specific group of people as oppressed, this group gains a higher social and moral status. They're treated as something special to a degree where they're praised and admired for their identity, as opposed to what they've personally merited or accomplished. Great lengths are taken to not offend these groups of people until they become practically untouchable. Efforts are taken to satisfy every fleeting whim they have. And it's no surprise that many of these people revel in such treatment. They love feeling special and being treated as special and having the world revolve around them. Because why wouldn't they? Oh, actually, I'm gender fluid. Oh, okay. Wait, what does gender fluid mean again? Gender fluid means my gender changes depending on the day or week or even depending on the hour. It also means the pronouns I'm comfortable with can change too. Oh, so how do I know what pronouns to use for you and other gender fluid people? Um, we all express them differently, but personally I express them through color-coded bracelets. Pink means she, her, yellow means they, them, and blue means he, him. And if I'm comfortable with this more than one pronoun, I will combine them. Oh, okay, so today's a she, they day? You got it. Okay, um, I'll keep that in mind. I find the requirement that a person must use specific pronouns to address you to be extremely narcissistic, especially when these pronouns are constantly changing depending on the day or even the hour. It illustrates the egotistical expectation that everybody around you must inconvenience themselves to indulge your temporary feelings and mood. In some instances, the delicate feelings of these narcissistic types of people are viewed as more important than the well-being of people lower down on the social ladder. The overall mentality is that guilty parties who cause offense to these protected groups should be punished. And lately this punishment has been viewed as more and more just by society, regardless of whether or not the offense was intentional or even if it was an offense at all. In mainstream culture, in movies and in music and in media, we're constantly being told that we all deserve to be happy. It's true that happiness is a noble goal, but only when it's pursued through means that are good. Happiness should never be pursued at the cost of the well-being of others or at the expense of someone else's happiness. We should never Never use people as stepping stones toward our own personal ambitions. Most of all, happiness should not be pursued at the expense of truth. For example, denying reality to satisfy our own delusions. I think the question we should be asking ourselves is, when does our personal happiness become more important than the good of the people around us? When does loving ourselves become more important than loving our family and friends? Personal happiness seems to have become the ultimate aim for most of us, as opposed to dedicating our lives to the service of something greater, as opposed to serving other people, our community, and our country. I think in our current society, it's overlooked how much joy and happiness can be derived from serving the people we love. Service to others can bring about a deep contentment in our lives, a sense of lasting fulfillment, caring for children, caring for our spouse, our parents, and friends. I think most of us want to show our love to those who are important to us. If we make the effort, we might find the experience of showing more love to others as opposed to just our ourselves more rewarding. Just as a side note, we mentioned at the beginning of this video that we would go so far as to say that selflessness is viewed as a weakness in our modern society while self-interest is viewed as a strength. This is definitely true. However, there is a deceitful type of selflessness that is encouraged and celebrated nowadays, and it's commonly referred to as virtue signaling. For example, people will take a few moments out of their day to post about some sort of politically correct issue in order to signal to others that they are quote unquote a good and selfless person. The problem is that they don't actually care about the issue in the sense that they would ever do anything beyond posting an Instagram story to protest it. And this is because what's actually important to them is being perceived as a good and selfless person, not actually being a good and selfless person. This sort of mentality is one of the most common ones that we currently see, not just in our political discourse, but our cultural 
political discourse as well. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Before we go, we just want to let you know that if you would like to support our work, there are separate donation links for us in the description of this video. Also, a very special shout out to those of you who have sent me gifts from my baby shower wish list. Many of you have sent me extremely helpful baby items and I really do appreciate your kindness so much. For anybody else interested in sending a baby shower gift, there is a link to my wish list in the video description. And lastly, if you haven't already, please take a moment to pick up a copy of my new book, Patriots Not Welcome, which is about all of my political experiences since 2016. You can pick up a signed paperback copy on my website if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, or you can pick up a regular Kindle or paperback copy on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you soon.